dolmens. This is the Dolmen de Barrière de. There's several dolmens in this little area, and we are near the village of Mier. And right over there, there's an abandoned uh, village. Um, this dolmen is a little bit different looking because you see it's only supported by two orthostats, and then got this giant capstone being uh, um, supported by just these two. It almost defying gravity. So another way that they can date dolmens and megalithic structures is by pottery. The different cultures had different pottery styles, and you can tell by the shape of the pottery and also by how the pottery is decorated, and that's how they will actually name a culture, like the funnel beaker culture or the LBK, linear band ceramic culture. So that's one way that they can be dated other than just trying to carbon date bones. But you can't date stone. Do we know how old this one is? I couldn't find a date for this one. Um, most of the ones in this region seem to be around 5,000 years old. The oldest uh, megalithic structures that you'll find in Europe are going to be in Iberia and also Brittany. Brittany has some of the oldest structures, but not everything in Brittany is 6,000 years old. Um, they were actually building megalithic structures for a few thousand years. So we've been hearing a lot of gunshots today because it's hunting day in France but all we're hunting is dolmens. This one's interesting how the two butt up against each other. Yeah, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting way to build this. I mean, normally it's like two like, kind of walls on either, like in parallel yeah, with like, each other. It's like more evenly balanced. Yeah. This one, this one seems off balance. Because this one is long and is right. obviously supporting most of the weight. And then this smaller one is supporting the rest of it. I guess you have to wonder how much trial and error this took. Like, how many times did this thing fall off? This dolmen is called the Dolmen de Barrière 3, and it's not far from the one that we just saw. And this is a very special dolmen because it still has its tumulus. And the tumulus is the mound of dirt that covers a dolmen. And it's very rare to find one like this. That's why this one is so special and why I wanted to talk about it. Um, because, like I said, most of the time when you find these, they just eroded away or people have dug them up and they've been uh, destroyed. But this one, this is a very nice example um, of what it, what, more of what it would have looked like when it was built. So it, it really looks like a tomb now. Yeah, you can really see how it looks. It looks much more like a tomb. So kind of like uh, the last dolmen that we saw, you see how it's got these really long orthostats that are supporting most of the weight of this giant slab. I think this is the biggest uh, capstone that we've seen so far, don't Definitely. you think? Oh, absolutely, at um, least in this area, yes. Yeah, and so this one has two 
about equal length uh, orthostats on this side, and then there's a stone in the back, and it really makes it look like a, a gravestone. So, so did they put one in front after they buried a body in it? Like to make it an enclosed tomb? I don't know. I don't know if they, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So I don't know. Is this limestone? I don't know, but I love how it's layered. How that rock, like, see how the, like, it's... Yeah, the other one was kind of like that too, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, over on this side, you can see how it's even less eroded. So you can see how much more buried. Like, this is pretty much all you would see. Um, you just come across and you just see and this stone. I think, I think that there would be dirt on top, okay. too. So, I mean, I think that it would just look like a hill with a little passage with a little path inside it. There are a lot of roadside dolmens, as I call them, in France, but um, the really special ones are really hard to get to and that you're literally going down a cow path <laughs> to find these dolmens. Um, gotta be really dedicated. They're also hard to find because they're not particularly well marked on the internet. Um, a lot of them have the same name. Like this one is called locally uh, Dolmen de Père Levé, meaning like raised stone. And that's the name for maybe 50% of the dolmens in France. They're all called something Père Levé, Pierre Levade. Um, and P-E-Y-R-E -E is like uh, the old word for stone uh, versus the modern French word for stone is Pierre. And the, um, the P-E-Y-R-E -E pair is like uh, the Occitani word. Yeah, about half the dolmens in France are called some variation of Pierre Levé, Pierre Levade, and the other half are called some variation of the Devil's Stone. <laughs> um, so it's confusing to try to find ones uh, when you're researching because they just, they all have the same name. They're not particularly well marked on maps. If you look on Google Maps for them, they're just sort of in the general area where they are and you can't always access them a lot of times they're just behind fences they're on private property um, so if you do go dolmen hunting just be aware of where you are and if you're allowed to be there how does it feel to be in there cozy does it feel like a nice tomb yeah it's a nice tomb <laughs> tomb sweet tomb <laughs> how do you think they moved all this stuff I don't know. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> I, where where did they find this giant rock? I don't know. How did they, I mean, they dragged it. How many people did it take to drag yeah. it? I mean, yeah, people were stronger back then. Imagine you come across, you're a farmer, right? And this is all covered in dirt, right? You're a thousand years after this is created. And you, you see this thing, you're like, I'm going to dig and see what's under that. And you find this opening. You're going to keep digging? People I feel have always like, been curious. I guess. I, I guess I can understand why people are like, oh, the devil must have put it there. Or it's an entrance to hell right. or something. No, these things were these things were incredibly mysterious to people of the past who didn't have modern archaeology. I mean, people five hundred years ago didn't know what dinosaurs were. I mean, they, they didn't they didn't know anything about the past. We didn't even have a concept of how old the past was. Yeah, how long ago? They had no idea how... It would have never even occurred to them that these things were like five, six, seven thousand years old. This is a very, very rocky area. There's just rocks everywhere. And so I think the Neolithic farmers, they had to clear their fields so they could farm. So um, they probably would gather really big stones and use them. I don't think stones like this were necessarily cut and brought to the site. It just looks like something that just had to be put there with a crane. Like it really does. It looks like, I mean. It's hard to imagine just people with right. ropes. Right, and I know it's, I, I know it's not aliens. I know they were smart, but it just. It, it, the answer it, is never aliens, okay? It's never aliens. And it's never demons either. <laughs> no demons, no aliens, just people. Really smart people. Yeah, really smart people. So what were they farming? So they were growing some cereal grains. They were growing some barley and some wheat. Um, they were doing a lot of uh, pasture animals. They were, uh, they were raising sheep and cows. Uh, people were starting to drink milk at this time. 
Um, and they were mostly using uh, their animals more for their milk than for their meat. So Neolithic farmers ate a lot less meat than foragers. And so they were generally less healthy because they were eating more grains and less meat, but they were starting to drink milk. But back then the cows didn't give as much milk as they give now. Plus the cow had to share the milk with the babies. So people weren't drinking as much milk as we drink today. So the fact that they were farmers implies settled civilization, at least the beginnings of... Yeah, they were more settled. And I think that that's... Um, because pastoralists will move around a lot. They just let their herds move around and graze. And, you know, you graze out one area, so you have to move on to another area. Um, but the farmers are, are being a little more settled. And so that might be why they're making these stone monuments, because they're staying in the same place constantly. So it's they're just more permanent structures. Um, it could be ways of laying claim to the land. Because also, while you've got these Neolithic farmers, there are still hunter-gatherers around. You've got two different civilizations kind of coexisting um, in Europe at this time, and there's there's tension between them, and they had very different lifestyles, and the, uh, the hunter-gatherers were actually healthier than the farmers. Um, if you would like to know more about any of these things that I'm talking about, just some more detail about the Neolithic era, I have some books in the description, and I'll have links to them, and they're Amazon affiliate links. But uh, there's some really good books on this era. One of my favorite is actually called The Age of Wood. And it's all about uh, man's use of wood throughout the ages. And he goes into a lot of detail of how they used the stone tools in the Neolithic to use wood more effectively in order to build things like this and build houses.